Yeah, hi everyone. I wanted to come on here and make another video of some of the things that I've experienced when I was being attacked by the demons. My brother Frank was living with me out in Tacoma, Washington. And we were sitting around the living room talking, just, you know, conversating. And with the TV off, the TV started talking and calling my brother Frank's name. The demons were trying to gain his attention and my attention by calling out to him his name from the TV. And uh, that was one of the, another one of the things that they've tried. Uh, another thing they tried is I had a doggy door in the back of my uh, mobile home. And my dog would go in and out of it. And it was, I believe it was early in the morning. And I heard this woman's voice saying, come here, come here. And she was calling my dog by his name, Thumper. So I go and I go out the back door where the doggy door is. And my dog, there's a hole in my fence, but you would have to, for him to get through the hole, he would have to crawl under the steps, go behind the steps, and then crawl under a fence and then go out the hole that was covered up. And that's what this demon was trying to do. And a very nice lady's voice standing in my neighbor's yard and calling my dog's name. And my dog was staring at it. And I couldn't see it. I could only hear its voice. And it was trying to coach him into making him get lost and follow her if not you know into traffic so uh that was another thing they tried to do they would shake uh they tried kicking the door a couple times one time they threatened to kill me and if i didn't leave the house that they would kill me and they kicked the door they kicked the door so violently that it shook the whole door frame and there's windows on either side of the door and this was even at a friend's house. So they kicked the door and it shook the whole frame of the door in the wall. And with windows on one side as a row of windows near the door knob and a, on the frame and a row of windows on the left side, you could see nothing was there. And they kicked it like three times. Boom, boom, boom. Like someone was trying to kick it in. So that was another thing that happened. But the one thing that happened one day was... My brother didn't believe me before all this happened, my brother Frank. So he was drinking with a friend, a mutual friend of ours, and he had a couple beers. I had nothing. I was with my dog. And they were conversating amongst themselves that I needed a CAT scan because there was something wrong with my brain. And my brother Frank said, I want my brother back. I want my brother back. He said, yeah, something's wrong with him. You got to get a CAT scan, bro. Him being tipsy from drinking the beer we went home because he was staying with me and I tried to I tried to plead with him I was telling the truth well in his drunkenness he screamed out to the Lord the Lord knows it God let me take my brother's plight tonight so he can get some rest I want my brother back well in that very minute the Lord gave him everything that was coming at me towards him and I slept like a baby my brother knows it. My brother Frank. Frank will not get on here. Frank will not admit it to no one. Uh, if there's any chance, he may discuss it with my other brother, which would be a good thing. He has admitted it to my sister, which is a good thing. Um, and then another thing I encountered was an angel in my kitchen. Floating up on the ceiling that took up the whole kitchen that was probably, I would say, nine feet by eight feet. It took up the whole kitchen ceiling and it was suspended in the air. And my brother Frank was it with me. And it was talking to me. And it had a long, white, flowing dress. 
And my brother Frank, I said, do you hear that this lady angel is talking to me? And I didn't know the scripture back then because it was hard to read it, being attacked and all that. And what I could get, I did get. He said, Louie, there's no female angels. Uh, so I searched the scriptures. There's no female angels. They're all described as male. And when they introduce themselves, the first thing they say is, do not be afraid. Because of their big intimidating appearance. So anyway, make a long story short. From standing in front of Jesus in that white permeating light that came off of him. That permeated, that love, that light. When I, when I think back to that angel that was in my kitchen. Number one, it was a female. It was a demon trying to deceive me. It was a female. And it was a cheap copy because there was no light emanating off of it. It had a real brand new white flowing gown type thing. But there was no light radiating off of it. Um, so I wanted to get that in there. So yeah. Me and my brother seen it. My brother will not talk about these things. My brother has had problems with... Uh, medical things and he talks to my sister now and then and he'll verify a few things um but i wanted to leave you with that and i wanted you to know that the good lord i have plenty of more too i have a lot more too one day when i was getting ready to go to the bathroom i hate to be so crude but i was getting ready to go to the toilet these things wanted to kill me and destroy me because i didn't want to bow down to them i flipped the toilet up the lid and put the seat down you know so i can sit down and go to the bathroom when i was getting ready to sit down i seen a it looked like a caterpillar worm but it was the size of your elbow to the tip of your fingers and about as round as a baseball, if not a softball. It had two eyes that were on top of the rim of the roundness of its mouth. The mouth took up the whole part of his head and it was trying to bite at me, I guess to go inside me and cause some kind of disease but it had rows of teeth like a shark in a circle from its lips all the way down to its tail the inside of it was nothing but teeth it was a worm it was a large worm it was about the size of my elbow to my fingertips i grabbed the thing believe it or not i grabbed the thing threw it in the toilet and then flushed it and it went down and uh, they are just some of the things that I've experienced I still have more things that I can tell you and these are what the demons do they flick your lights off they bang your doors they held me down they paralyzed me. I can only blink and breathe. I had people sitting next to me as I was laying on the couch. I couldn't even move my feet, fingers, or nothing to tap them and tell them or scream out to them. They were right there in the same room. But when I prayed silently in my head to Jesus, as soon as I got to the name Jesus, they released me. So we have power in the name of Jesus. Jesus has given us power over these principalities. And these wicked demonic demons. And uh, I remember one time when they said they were going to kill me and I had enough. And I wound up getting irate with them. I said, and I quote, if the lo my Lord allows me, one day I will expose you if my Lord allows me. And they spit in my face. Not one spit, not two. They kept spitting on me. And I felt this spit hit my face. And when I felt it hit, it felt like pieces of little tiny ice cubes. They were cold and they would hit. You would feel almost like a bug flew into your face with the pressure of the spit that would hit me. And that's what it felt like. So I'm going to leave you with that for now. But I want you to know... 
please, please, please repent. Know the scripture and love letter that our Lord has given us. Our Lord Jesus Christ and Almighty God the Father love you so much, so much. Repent. Search yourselves and edify yourselves. Go all the way back to when you can remember and, and edify yourself. It's not the people around you that are making you do such things. It ain't your wife or husband that are making you do such things. You have to search yourself and say, why do I have this anger? Why do I feel like I have a mental illness? Why do I feel like I have this? Why do I have um, um, homosexual tendencies or lesbian tendencies? These things are from the devil. They are tactics from, to, from the devil to draw you away from Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ made man and woman. Do not change the natural use of the man and woman. Do not kill babies. Do not do these things. Do not be angry. But everything in conversation should be to the edification of the person in which you are speaking to. That way if you edify them, it glorifies the Lord. We are all here for a purpose. The very fact that you are listening to this video is not by chance. You have tuned into this video not by curiosity, but because of the Holy Spirit that's in you that wants you to cleanse yourself and edify yourself and get on your knees and submit to the King of Glory and repent. Go through your whole life from when it started as a teenager. Everything you can remember and everything you can't remember. And please, when you repent, it's from the heart. It's not from your head or your mouth. It's from your heart. If you want to know how to repent, in the Psalms, David wept on his pillow and wet it every night in repentance it's a heart condition it's not a mouth or a head condition thank you everyone have a good evening may God bless you and guide you I pray that this reaches who it needs to reach and I pray to the Lord Jesus that it lifts your spirit and it activates you to know the gospel of Christ I truly believe 99% of people do not know scripture, nor do they know the power of God. Search the scriptures. Search the scriptures for yourself. Do not listen to another man, preacher, anything. Search the scriptures for yourself and pray to the Lord Jesus Christ in spirit. In spirit. Have a good night.